I've been testing out a new piece of editing equipment here in the studio. It's called the Loop Deck CT right here. You'll get a better look at it in just a second, but I actually use this to help me make that margarita video in Adobe Premiere. If you guys haven't heard about Loop Deck before, go check them out. I definitely recommend it. They're sponsoring this video, so I'll place their link in the description below and you can find out all the information there. But this is the Loop Deck CT. They make another device as well. They make the Loop Deck Plus right here which is another really cool device for helping you edit your photos and videos. Both are really cool. This video is gonna be about the CT, but I'm all about anything that makes your editing process more natural, quicker, more intuitive, and just improves your workflow. So if you guys wanna see a whole nother video, I could definitely make one about the Loop Deck Plus right here. Well, you might be thinking, what the heck is a Loop Deck CT? Well, in a nutshell, it's a companion for your keyboard. It helps to make the whole editing process of your photos and videos a lot faster, more intuitive, and more natural, I would just have to say. I kind of like to think of it as a mixer for your photo and video work. It works natively with Adobe Premiere, with Photoshop, Lightroom, and even Capture One. It has a bunch of dials, buttons, and knobs for quickly adjusting the sliders and brushes and tools that you would use to make your post-production happen. And, and it comes with software so you can customize what each of these buttons and dials do to make it perfectly fit your unique workflow. It has so much to it that an entire video could be made about each one of the softwares it's compatible with. But does it make you a faster editor? Well, that's the question, right? And I've mainly been using it with three types of software that I use regularly in my photo and video work. And so I've had practice with it. And I just kind of want to give you my thoughts in this video. So without giving you an answer right away, let's just dive into the LoopDeck CT and Premiere Pro. Now, before I get too deep into the weeds here, the CT has three main buttons or categories when you're inside Premiere that you can access, each having their own set of tools up here on the touchscreen and dials. Button number one is dedicated to project hotkeys and the tools you need to lay clips down on the timeline and make your edit. Button number two has all of the color correction stuff, color wheels and buttons for making that happen. And button number three is for audio. For me and the work that I do, I spend most of my time editing, you know, laying clips down on the timeline, organizing them, making that story happen. I'm not too much of a big color correction person. I'm getting more into audio, but the vast majority of my day is spent in that number one tab. Right off the bat, two awesome tools are these two dials right here, the zoom and the select clip dial, for easily moving around the timeline. Rotating the zoom dial makes your timeline larger and smaller, and if you're all the way in there zoomed into the max, pressing on the dial will snap the timeline back out. Now I know it's not sexy, but if I had to tally up all of the different hotkeys that I use during an edit, I guarantee I can make a solid bet that the plus and minus key for zooming in and out on your keyboard would be the most. So I'm so happy I no longer have to do that. I can just simply turn this dial. Also, not having to do the arrow keys for moving around the timeline is fantastic. Pretty much any hotkey that takes my hand off the mouse just kills me during editing. So to go through my clips on the timeline, again, it's a nice dial on the CT. I can scroll through my clips, find the one I want, zoom into it with the other dial. If I want to, I can breeze through them, maybe go to the middle of the clip with the large main dial here. And if I wanna go frame by frame, I can hold the function button with my pinky and scroll with the main dial with my thumb. Then I can start messing with the clip from there. Maybe I want to slice it up or add a keyframe or something like that. On the touchpad, you have tools and options for more tools here. I have a shot here that kind of used most of them to make it happen. It's this shot here of me picking up the knife and then ninja chopping this lime. It's actually three shots put together and I have them separated over here on the timeline. I had to film it in three shots. One, because I'm filming and holding the knife and two, because I'm tracking the knife while the camera is moving on the slider. My slider doesn't move that fast so I had to slow down the action then speed up the clips to make it look natural. The first clip is of me picking up the knife while the camera pulls back slightly and pans up to track the knife. So to start editing this, I'll click on the trim dial that will add this red little trim selection thingy at the front of the clip, then I'll hold down the function button and use the main dial to scrub one frame at a time to where my hand just starts to come in and grab that knife. Then I'll trim that clip by turning the trim dial to that point. The CT makes pretty quick work of stuff like that. Here I'll select this next clip and bump it up to my first clip. Once you get used to it, it's a pretty fluid way of editing. The end of this clip trails on for a little bit too long, so again, I'll click on the trim dial, holding the function button, scrub to where I want the clip to end, right about here when that slider comes to rest, 
then twist the dial to trim the end of the clip. This last clip of the slice, it looks like I didn't get the frame where the knife just touches the lime. It's kind of a fraction of a second too late when the knife is already going through it. So it looks like I'll just trim off that one frame, then butt it up against this previous clip. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I'm loving the fact that I haven't actually touched my keyboard yet. When I'm editing, sometimes I'm trying to line up movements for other clips like this or for music or whatever. Usually I find where I want the clip to cut, like say here for example, then I'll grab my arrow tool and I'll drag the end of the shot to my scrubber here and then I'll highlight all of the other shots and audio on my timeline and bring it together. Now I know the ripple edit tool is so much faster for that but I always forget to use it. However, for some reason, probably because it's a button now right here on the CT instead of a hotkey that I forget and instead of doing what I just did, I can scrub to where I want the clip to end, hit the ripple edit button and drag the clip to the scrubber and the rest of the clips and audio on the timeline follows. And if you don't use the ripple edit tool now, you definitely should start regardless of the loop deck or not. It's a fantastic tool, especially when you're trying to make those finishing touches on a huge edit. It'll just save you a ton of time. Now next for this sequence is just adding some speed ramps to the clip. The middle clip here, if I remember correctly, is sped up without a speed ramp, which is also a button on the CT. Well, actually the speed duration box is. Just press on the third button, then select speed duration. I think I sped this clip up to around 3800. Then on this first clip, I added a speed ramp. It has a slow start and then it finishes a little fast. I think it sped up to around 250 at the beginning when I picked up the knife to ramp up to around 750-ish. Then I pulled these little tabs out a bit and rounded off the ramp. Now I'll just butt these clips up together and we have a single camera movement out of three clips, which I think is pretty cool. Another thing the Loop Deck CT does really well is color correction. Now number two brings up all the color goodness and I'm no color professional and I'm going to show you a lot of this when we jump into Lightroom, but I wanted to create a preset for color correcting this margarita video. Now I might have to go in and bring the exposure up here or there with some of these clips, but I want to get an overall look going on here. So first up are all the basic adjustments that are dials over here. And the more you use the CT, the more you memorize where all these dials are without even looking, which is great because it keeps your eyes on the image instead of on the sliders or on the dials. So for this shot, I'm gonna bring down the temp. You know, just dial that back a little bit. My camera shoots a little warm in my opinion, so maybe around minus 15. Now I'll pop the tint to the magenta side to add back in some of that warmth, maybe plus three and then I'll increase the contrast to something like plus 20 or 25. Now I'm gonna leave the rest of this stuff alone and skip on down to the creative box here. You can access these creative dials by swiping up on the touchscreen here. When you do that, you get a whole new set of options and dials. Like maybe I'll add some vibrance, just a couple of points, you know, maybe 15 to 20. Maybe add some faded film look to go with my classic margarita and this old world Patron bottle. Maybe a little saturation, and then I'll skip on down to the color wheel selector. Now you can access the different color wheels with the color wheel button up top. That opens up a new page of buttons, one for your shadows, one for your midtones, and one for the highlights. Then down here on the main dial, you can use the touch screen to affect the colors of these specific areas like warming or cooling the highlights or by turning the dial to make them brighter or darker. I'll start with the shadows here for my clip. I'll just twist the main dial here, darken them down a bit to right about there. I mean, that looks nice. That adds a little bit more contrast. And then I'll add some blue into the shadows as well. Just a couple of touches, some small movements towards this blue cyan side, you know, just a hint. Now I hit the mid-tone button, move down to the wheel. I want to brighten these up a bit. Oh, by the way, you can go full screen with this. If you want to edit full screen, you can hit the button right here without the tabs on either side. I personally like to see the RGB parade, but you know, this is pretty cool. Now I'll leave the colors where they are for the mid-tones. If anything, just a smidge to the cooler side. And then I'll hit the highlight button. I'm going to darken these down a touch and warm them up a bit. Maybe a few touches on the wheel here to the warmer side. Maybe just add a tad more and cool. Now we can see a little before and after. You know, nice, it has that look to it. I might make a small change here or there afterwards, but you know, now I wanna save this as a preset and start applying it to my other clips here. There's a ton more that I didn't even touch on as far as color correction inside of Premiere with the loop deck, but overall it made the whole editing process different. Maybe a little faster, a lot more fluid, I think, in my experience, and in the end, a pretty cool little test advertisement for Patron.
Now, I'm not gonna lie, it took some time forcing myself to use the CT instead of my keyboard. I mean, in the beginning, I had to keep reminding myself that it was even there. It's really this mental shift because for so long, I've built these habits around my keyboard and my workflow. Some are good and some are bad. I mean, one thing that I, I think I do do that is a really bad habit and probably stems from shooting almost exclusively here in the studio with very consistent lighting is that oftentimes for my images, I'm you know using presets for those basic adjustments or I'm simply just typing in the numbers. Because moving the sliders very precisely takes up just so much time because it's really so imprecise with your mouse. I mean, you're looking over here at the slider and then you're looking back at the image and then back over here at the slider again and eventually you just end up typing in a number. Then I tab to the next slider and type in a number, tab over, rinse and repeat. I mean, I can do that really fast, but that means that a lot of my images get the same treatment, even though they're from completely different shoots, which I know is, is super lazy of me, but it's a time thing. And maybe I'll go in and give some extra special attention to those individual images with some local adjustment brushes, but sometimes I just have a lot of images to get through, but I'm noticing that with the loop deck here, I'm kind of slowly breaking some of those bad habits without really spending any more time per image, let's say. And I'm sure it's only gonna get faster the more I use it. I just went through and entirely re-edited a portion of my archive portfolio in a couple of hundred images. And you know, I'll be editing that down to around 45 pages in a printed physical portfolio book, which you'll see in the next video. But I did that working exclusively with the loop deck just so I could break myself away from the keyboard. And during that time of forcing myself to use it, it became more natural and intuitive. And now I kind of know where the dials are without even looking at them. You can easily move these dials to get to a very specific number. So I'm not gonna sit here and say that every image in my portfolio has a completely unique edit, but I think there is a lot of stock in being able to move these clicky dials and look at the image as you're adjusting it instead of looking at the sliders or looking at your keyboard. And now after all that, I kind of give a little cringe every time I have to take my hand off the loop deck and move it back onto the keyboard to do a hotkey or something like that. It's kind of like a second mouse in that respect. All right, I have a couple of my images here from a cookbook that I shot last year loaded up into Lightroom and I thought I would just take you through some of my favorite features of the loop deck CT and just how it kind of makes this whole editing process a lot smoother and more fluid. We'll start off in the library module. Well, actually, uh, before that, the library and the develop modules have their own dedicated buttons, number one and two right here, so you can cycle between the two. And actually, cycling between the grid view and the loop view also has a button on this main dial, which is a really nifty touch screen of its own. And you can also rate images for organization, and you can rotate images by pressing this button up here. And then you can move on to the next one with the dial or by rotating the dial or, or using the arrow buttons. And then you can continue on for there. I do a lot of this stuff, rating and rotating, a lot of boring things before I even begin to edit. So to not have to take my hand off the mouse to do some crazy hotkey combo is really nice. Just to have a dedicated button over here, like the rotate button on the Loop Deck CT is fantastic. I think that's kind of the main point of the Loop Deck, and I'm gonna go off on a rant here, but the reason why you learn all of these hotkeys for all of these different programs and you memorize them all is to save you time and all that time that you save accumulates over the long term and I think that's kind of what the loop deck is all about I mean it's not just a hot key tab it does a ton of other stuff but my point is is that you know when you're working on images constantly having to take your hand off the mouse to do some hotkeys can become quite tedious except especially since I've moved from a laptop to a large keyboard some of those you know four key combo that hand gymnastics that you're doing can be quite impossible in some circumstances so you know having something nice and off to side dedicated for those hotkeys and for doing some of these other adjustments will save you seconds and those seconds will add up to minutes and those minutes will add up to hours and those hours will add up to days and I just feel like the whole you know thing is speeding up my workflow all right rant over let's move on to the develop module and I can show you how I would use this for my edits 
the entire basic panel is located on these six dials at the top. And I, I can turn down the temp of this image to around 4,800. I kind of like it a little bit cooler. I don't know, that's just me and my personal style. I can also increase the contrast. And if I add too much of anything, I can click on the dial to reset it to zero. Or I could slowly twist any one of these dials back and they give you this nice little clickety click feel with each increment. I'll leave the highlights and the shadows and the whites and blacks with this image alone for right now and I'll move on down to clarity. It's actually hidden, so to access this dial, all you have to do is swipe up on the touchpad like this and all of these dials are now assigned to a whole new set of adjustments. And you can move all of these around inside of the software and customize the loop deck however you want. Now for this image, I might add a little bit of clarity and uh, maybe dehaze it a bit and then add some vibrance. Awesome. Now I can hit number five here and that'll allow me to access the lens profile button so I can take the bend out of my 50 millimeter lens here at the edges. All of this is pretty simple and you can see that I have two of these images with the duck. That's because the duck breast is more elevated than these slices over here. So I took two images, one where I focused here and the other one where I focused there. And I'll combine them later in Photoshop, but copying these adjustments one from the other is also a button on the loop deck. So I can select the image that I've already done my corrections on and I can hit the copy button over here and then I can switch over to this other image and hit the paste button and done. They're ready to be composited together. Now local adjustments is something I do on almost every image. So I'll take anything that helps speed that up or makes the process a lot more fluid. Like this image of the chicken, maybe I'll tone down just the edge of the meat there. It looks like the light hit it a little bit too much or over on this tagine image, it's looking a little bit dark in there, so I might brighten just the inside of that. On these chocolate lava cakes, I'll hit the brush button. I can increase the brightness of my brush over here on the exposure slider inside the program. Then on the dial of the CT, I can hit the brush adjustment on the touch screen. A new page opens up, and I can control my brush's size and feather. Now I'll rotate the dial and turn the feather all the way up, and then I'll hit the brush size button and work through the image. Oh, I can also tap on the show mask button here to toggle it on and off. And I can also change the color of the mask with the button right next to it. This green mask is a little bit more visible on these brown lava cakes than the red was. And now I can paint the mask over the top here and I can smoothly make the brush smaller or larger while I paint using the dial without having to tap my keyboard a million times or take my finger off the mouse. It's so quick and I would have to say it's so much more of a fluid and natural way of painting masks closer to using a Wacom tablet for editing. I mean mashing the keyboard. This is literally the sound of me editing photos all day. All day long, like mash, 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 versus the dial. I mean, I'm loving it. Not as much has been done as far as out of the box setup for Capture One on the Loop Deck CT as they did with Lightroom. All of that stuff that I showed you in Lightroom was straight out of the box. It was all organized very well and the button layout was very intuitive, at least for my workflow. However, I used Loop Deck software to customize it to Capture One so the CT functions similar to how it does with Lightroom. So as you can see with the main dial here, I can control the brush for creating masks in pretty much the same way with the brush size larger and smaller and the feather hard and soft, along with all the other basic adjustments on the six smaller dials here and you can swipe up to get even more. I organized the second button with all of my develop tools, the removal spot tool, the reset button if I wanted to go back to the original, the rotate button and the before and after button which is actually a new feature in the latest Capture One update which is pretty cool. I don't know why it wasn't there to begin with but on the second row I have my draw and erase mask buttons, the gradient mask and a show mask button and below that on the third row are my hand tool for moving around the image when zoomed in, my clone variant button, and my copy adjustments and paste adjustment buttons. And the number one button has my rating tools. Creating these custom tools are pretty easy inside the software. For example, with the main dial here, I added the ability to control the brush for Capture One. You hop into the new wheel page by clicking on the wheel in the diagram. I've already created one, but I'll click on this plus icon to create a new one just to show you. And then you can choose what kind of layout you want. I'll go with just the two side by side. And then you can click over here on the plus symbol for creating a new custom adjustment and you can type in the hotkeys you want. You can see a little rotate symbol, so when I rotate the wheel this way, I wanted to make the brush smaller, so I'll just type in the smaller brush hotkey, which is the left bracket on the keyboard, and then hit the check mark. 
and then type in the right bracket key to make the brush bigger when I rotate the wheel in this direction. Now you can give it a name like brush size and click save, and then you can drag the new command over to the wheel and test it out in Capture One. It works pretty awesome and no more mashing the keyboard for hours on end while I'm doing those local adjustments for my images. I customized two of my favorite buttons on the first tool page for Capture One, which I didn't really talk about yet. One being the rotate key, which in Capture One is really difficult. I know you guys think I'm crazy about the whole rotating thing, but in Capture One to rotate your image, it's Control Alt L, which is some kind of crazy twister game for your fingers. And if you miss the Alt key in that three key combo, it will auto lighten your image and you have to go back and undo that. And so it's really, you know, making me happy that I can customize that as a single button on the Loop Deck CT here. Now, alongside that, my other favorite button that I created is the custom shutter button. I just went into the software and added a new custom button typed in the hotkey to fire off your camera when you're tethering, named it, which actually now thinking about it, I'm gonna rename that right now to something funny like Kapow. Adding these two buttons made me really think about buying an extra long cable for the Loop Deck CT, maybe something like 15 feet. That way I could have it at the table with me while I'm styling, while I'm doing my compositions and being able to you know, fire off the camera or, or rotate my images without having to walk over to the laptop or the computer. And I just thought of this, not only would you know having the Loop Deck CT be nice on the table while you're styling, but it would also be great next to the laptop on a shoot because oftentimes I work with assistants or food stylists or even clients and they want to mess around with the computer. They want to rotate the images. They Maybe they want to rate the images or even fire off the camera. Sometimes the food stylists would like to fire off the camera and check their composition while I'm taking a break and they're doing their thing. So, you know, not having to explain to them how to work the computer or how to work the photo editing software and do some crazy three key combo hot key that they've never done before. You know, having those buttons right there, having the ability for them to control the camera in a very easy way would, at least in my experience, be extremely valuable on set. So instead of hitting Control K or Command K on the keyboard to fire off my camera when I'm using Capture One, or hitting that shutter button inside the software or the shutter button on my camera, I now have the ability to hit the Kapow button. Kapow! Kapow! I know, it's the little things in life. I'm a nerd, but what can I do? I love it. Kapow, kapow. Just keep doing this all day. What are you doing? Firing off my camera remotely. But hey, huge thanks to everyone over at Loop Deck. You guys are awesome. Thank you for sponsoring this video. If you want to find out more about them, maybe pick up the Loop Deck CT or the Loop Deck Plus for yourself. Check out that link in the description below. Find out all the information there. But that's it for this video. I got a lot more coming on the way. I'm back at it, so I'll see you in the next one.